live from Munich, Germany, it's theCUBE. Covering IBM Fast Track Your Data. Brought to you by IBM. We're back, this is Dave Vellante with Jim Kobielus, and this is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. We are here covering special presentation of IBM's Fast Track Your Data, and we're in, in Munich, Germany. It's been a day-long session. We started this morning with a panel discussion with five senior level data scientists that Jim and I hosted. Then we did CUBE interviews in the morning. We cut away to the main tent. Uh, Kate Silverton did a very choreographed, scripted, but very well done main keynote set of presentations. IBM made a couple of announcements today. And then we finished up the CUBE interviews. Jim and I are here to, to wrap. We're actually running on ibmgo.com. We're running uh, live uh, Hillary Mason talking about what she's doing in data science. And also, uh, we got a session on GDPR. You got to log in to see those sessions, so go ahead to ibmgo.com and you'll find those, hit the schedule and go to the Hillary Mason and GDPR channels and check that out. But we're going to wrap now. Jim, uh, two main announcements today. I, I hesitate to call them big announcements. I mean, they were, you know, just kind of, I think the word you used last night was perfunctory. Um, uh -oh. You know, I mean, <laughs> they're okay, they're, I'll explain they're that important, one. <laughs> but they're not game changing. So no. what did you mean? Well, first of all, when you look at most, the, the IBM is not calling this a signature event. It's essentially a signature event. They do these every June or so. You know, in the, in the past several years, the signature events have had like a one track theme, whether it be IBM announcing they're investing deeply in Spark, or IBM announcing that they're uh, focusing on uh, investing on R as the core language for data science development. This year at this event in Munich, it's really a three track um, event in terms of the broad themes. And none, I mean, they're all important tracks, but none of them is like game changing. Um, perhaps IBM doesn't intend them to be, it seems like. One of which is obviously Europe. We're holding this in Munich. And a couple of things of, of importance to European customers, first and foremost, GDPR, the deadline next year in terms of compliance is approaching. So sound the, you know, the alarm as it were, and IBM has, has rolled out uh, compliance or governance uh, tools, download and go for the information catalog, governance catalog and so forth, now announcing the uh, consortium with Hortonworks to build uh, you know, governance on top of Apache Atlas. That's, but also IBM announcing that um, they've opened up um, a DSX center in, in England and a, um, a machine learning hub here in Germany to help their European clients in those, in, in those countries especially to get deeper down into data science and machine learning in terms of developing those applications. That's important for the audience, the, the regional audience here. The second track, which is also important and I alluded to it, it's governance. Um, in all of its manifestations, you need a master catalog of all the assets for you know, building and maintaining and uh, controlling your data applications and your data science applications. The catalog, the consortium, uh, the various offerings that IBM has announced and discussed in great detail. That we, they've brought in uh, customers and partners like Northern Trust to talk about the, the importance of governance, not just as a, you know, a, a, a compliance mandate, but also as a potential strategy for monetizing your data, that's important. Uh, number three um, is what I call um, cloud native data applications and the, 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 how the state of the art in developing data applications is moving towards containerized and orchestrated uh, 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 environments that involve things like Docker and Kubernetes. The IBM DB2 Developer Community Edition has been on the market for a few years the latest version they announced today includes Kubernetes support, support for JSON, so it's geared towards the new generation of cloud native apps. What I'm getting is that there are three, those three core themes um, are Europe, governance, and cloud native data application development. Each of them is, is individually important, but none of them is a game changer. And one last thing, data science and machine learning is one of the, the overarching envelope themes of this event. They've had Hillary Mason, a lot of discussion there. Um, my sense, I, I was a little bit disappointed but that there wasn't any significant new announcements related to IBM evolving their machine learning portfolio into deep learning 
or artificial intelligence we, in, in an environment where their direct competitors like Microsoft and Google and, and Amazon are making a huge push in, in AI in terms of their investments. Um, I there's a bit of a discussion, and Rob Thomas got to it this morning, about DSX working with Power AI, the IBM platform. Um, I, we'd like to hear more going forward about IBM investments in these areas. So I thought it was a, a, an interesting bunch of announcements. I wouldn't say, I'll backtrack on perfunctory. I'll just say it was good that they had this for a lot of reasons. But like I said, none of these individual announcements is really changing the game. And in fact, like I said, I, I think I'm waiting for the fall to see where IBM goes in terms of doing something that's actually differentiating and innovative. Well, I think that um, the event itself is great. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We got a bunch of partners here, a bunch of, a bunch of customers. I mean, it's active. IBM knows how to throw a party. They always have. And, and the sessions are really individually awesome, I mean, in terms of what you learn. The content is very good, yeah. I, I would agree. Uh, the two announcements that they made was sort of, you know, DB2, sort of what I call community edition. Uh, simpler, easy to download. Even Dave can download DB2. Mm -hmm. I really don't want to download DB2, but, but I could. Uh, and play with it, I guess. You know, I'm not a database guy. Uh, but those of you out there that are, go check it out. Uh, and the other one was this sort of unified data governance. They tried to tie it in. I think they actually did a really good job of tying it into GDPR. Yeah. We're going to hear over the next you know, 11 months just a ton of GDPR readiness, fear, uncertainty, and doubt from the vendor community. Uh, kind of like we, we heard with Y2K. Yeah. Um, we'll see what kind of impact GDPR has. I mean, it looks like it's the real deal, Jim. I, yeah. I mean, it looks like you know this 4% of turnover penalty, the penalties are much more onerous than any other sort of you know, regulation that we've seen in the past where you could just sort of fluff it up and say, ah, just, just pay the fine. Um, I think you're going to see a lot of, well, pay the lawyers to delay this thing and battle it. And one of our, one of our people on theCUBE today that we interviewed said it exactly right. It's like the, GDPR is like the inverse of Y2K, where Y2K, everybody was freaking out. It was actually nothing when, you, when it came down to it. Where nobody, nobody in, on the street is really buzzing, I mean, the average person is not buzzing about GDPR but it's hugely important, and like you said, I mean, some serious penalties may be in the works for companies that are not complying. Companies not just in Europe, but all around the world who do business with European customers. Right, okay, so now, bring it back to sort of machine learning, yeah. deep learning, you basically said to Rob Thomas, I see machine learning here, I don't see a lot of the deep learning stuff quite yet. Uh, he said, stay tuned. Uh, you know, you were talking about TensorFlow and things like that. Yeah, they supported that, you know, uh, Rob you Explain. Said, yeah, so Rob indicated that IBM very much, like with Power AI and DSX, provides an open framework or toolkit for plugging in your, you, you the developers, preferred machine learning or deep learning toolkit of an open source nature, and there's a growing range of open source deep learning toolkits beyond, you know, TensorFlow flow, including Fiano and MXNet and so forth, that IBM is supporting within the overall DSX framework, but also within the Power AI framework. Um, in other words, they've got those capabilities. They're sort of burying that message under a bushel basket, at least in terms of this event. Um, also, um, one of the things that, I, I, I said this to, um, uh, to Manish Goyal, is that w, Watson Data Platform, which they launched last fall, very important product, very important platform for collaboration among data science professionals in terms of the machine learning development pipeline. Um, I wish there was more about the Watson Data Platform here, about where they're taking it and what the customers are doing with it. Like I said a couple of times, I see Watson Data Platform as very much a DevOps tool for the new generation of developers that are building machine learning models directly into their applications. I'd like to see IBM going forward turn Watson Data Platform into a, a true DevOps platform in terms of continuous integration of, of, of machine learning and deep learning and other statistical models, continuous training, continuous deployment, iteration. I believe that's where they're going or probably will be going. I'd like to see more, I'm expecting more along those lines going forward. And that's a, that what I just described about DevOps for data science is a big theme that we're focusing on at, at Wikibon in terms of where the industry's going. Yeah, yeah. and I want to come back to that um, and get, get an update on what you're doing and your team and talk about the research. 
Before we do that, I mean, one of the things we talked about on the, on the Cube in the early days of Hadoop is that the guys who are going to make the money in this big data business are the practitioners. It's, they're not going to see you know, these multi you know, hundred billion dollar valuations come out of the Hadoop world. And so far that prediction has held up well. Yeah. It's the Airbnbs and the Ubers and the Spotify's and the Facebooks and the Googles, the practitioners who are applying big data that are crushing it and making all the money. And you see Amazon now buying Whole Foods. That, in our view, is yeah. a data play. Um, but who's winning here uh, in, the, in, in either the vendor or the practitioner community? Um, who's winning are the startups with a hot new idea that's changing, that's disrupting some industry or set of industries with machine learning, deep learning, big data, et cetera. So if you're, um, you know, for example, everybody's with bated breath waiting for you know, self-driving vehicles and, and the, that ecosystem as it develops. Somebody's going to clean up in, uh, one or more companies, companies we've probably never heard of, leveraging everything we're describing here today, DevOps for data science and uh, containerized distributed a applications that involve you know, deep learning for you know, image analysis and sensor analytics and so forth. Putting it all together in some new fabric that changes the way we live on this planet. But as you said, the platforms themselves, whether they be Hadoop or Spark or TensorFlow, whatever, they're open source. You know, and the, the fact is, by its very nature, open source based solutions in terms of the profit margins on, on selling those uh, inexorably migrate to zero. So you're not going to make any money as a tool vendor or a platform vendor. You got to make money, if you're going to make money, you make money, for example, uh, providing um, um, an ecosystem within which innovation can happen. You know? mm. Okay, let's get a few minutes left. Let's talk about the research that you're okay. working on. What's exciting you these days? And right, what you got right. Going? So, I think a lot of people know I've been around the analyst space for a long, long time. I've joined the SiliconANGLE Wikibon team just recently. Um, I used to work for a very large solution provider. <coughs> um, and what I do here uh, for Wikibon is I focus on data science as the core of next generation application development. When I say next generation application development, it's the development of AI, deep learning, machine learning, and the deployment of those data-driven statistical assets into all manner of applications. And you look at the hot stuff, like chatbots, for example, transforming the experience in e-commerce, on mobile devices, Siri, and Alexa, and so forth. Hugely important, so what we're doing is we're focusing on AI and everything. We're focusing on a containerization and, and building of microservice, AI microservices, and uh, the ecosystem of, of the, and the pipelines and the tools that allow you to do that. DevOps for data science, uh, distributed training, federated training of, of statistical models, so forth. Um, we are also fo very much focusing on the whole uh, distributed containerized ecosystem, Docker, Kubernetes, and so forth, where that's going in terms of changing the state of the art in terms of application development. We're focusing on the API economy. All of those things that you need to wrap around the, the payload of AI to make it, to deliver it into, into every so fabric. You're, you're focused on that intersection between AI and the related topics yeah. in the developer community. Yeah. Who is winning in that developer community? Obviously Amazon's winning, you got Microsoft doing a good job there, you know, Google, Apple, who, who else? I mean, how's IBM doing, for example? Um, maybe, name some names. Who, do you, who impresses you in the developer community? But, but specifically, let's start with IBM. How is IBM doing in that space? IBM's doing really well. I mean, I, and in terms of, IBM has been for quite a while, been very good about engaging with the new generation of developers using Spark and R and, and Hadoop and so forth <coughs> to, <coughs> excuse me, to build um, uh, applications rapidly and deploy them rapidly into all manner uh, of applications. So IBM has very much reached out to, in the last several years, the millennials for whom all of this, these new tools are, have been their, their core repertoire from the very start. And I think in many ways, like today, like developer edition, um, uh, the DB2 developer uh, community edition, is very much geared to that market, saying you know, to the cloud native application developer, take a second look at DB2. There's a lot in DB2 um, that you might bring into your next uh, application development initiative 
alongside your Spark Toolkit and so forth. So um, IBM is, IBM has startup envy. Um, they're a big, old company, been around more than 100 years, and they're trying to very much bootstrap and, and restart their brand in, that, in this new context in the 21st century. I think they're making a good effort uh, at doing it. So uh, in terms of community engagement, they have a really good community engagement program all around the world in terms of hackathons and developer days, um, you know, uh, meetups here and there, and they get lots of turnout and very loyal customers. And IBM's got the broadest portfolio. So, so you're of still bleeding. You're still bleeding a little bit of blue. So oh. I got to I got to uh, squeeze it out of you now here. Uh, so so let me ask uh, you. But let me ask you. Let me let me push a little bit on what you're saying. So DB2 is the emphasis here, trying to make position DB2 as as appealing for developers. But why not some of the other you know uh, acquisitions that they've made? I mean, you don't hear that much about Cloudant and Dash DB and things of that nature. You would think that that would be more appealing to some of the developer community than, than DB2, or am I mistaken? Is it IBM sort of going after the core, trying to evolve that core you know, no, uh, constituency? No, they've done a lot of strategic acquisitions like CloudAnt, um, and, and like they've acquired a, a graph databases and brought yeah. them into their platform. IBM has every type of database or, or distributed file system that you might need for web or social or internet of things and so forth. All of the development challenges, IBM's got a really high quality, fit to purpose, best of breed platform, underlying data plat platform for it. They've got huge amounts of developers energized all around the world and working on those platforms. Mm -hmm. um, DB2, every, in, in the last several years, they've taken all of their platforms, their legacy, pla that's the wrong word, all their existing mature platforms like DB2 and brought them into the IBM cloud. I think legacy is the right word. Yeah, I mean, yeah. These, yeah. these things have been around for 30 years. And, and they're not, and they're 50 not, in some and cases. they're not going away because they're they they're 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 field proven and, and they, they're evolving. And they they are the customers have implemented them everywhere, mm. and they're evolving. If you look at how IBM has evolved DB2 in the last several years, into for example, they responded to the challenge from SAP HANA mm. when brought blue acceleration technology in memory technology into DB2 to make it screamingly fast, and so forth. Um, IBM has done a really good job of, of turning around these product groups and the, the product architectures, making them cloud first, and then reaching out to the new generation of cloud application developers. Like I said, today, things like DB2, developer uh, uh, community edition, is just the next chapter in this ongoing saga of IBM turning itself around. Um, so like I said, each of the individual announcements today is like, okay, that's interesting, I'm glad to see IBM showing progress. None of them is individually disruptive. I think the last week though, I think the one with Hortonworks was disruptive in the sense that IBM recognized that big insights didn't really have a lot of traction in the Hadoop spaces, not as much as they would have wished. Hortonworks very much does, and IBM has cast its lot with, Hort with HDP. <laughs> but HDP, uh, Hortonworks recognizes they haven't achieved any attrac attraction with data scientists. Therefore, DSX makes sense as part of the Hortonworks portfolio. Likewise, um, a big SQL uh, uh, makes perfect sense as the SQL front end to, the, to HDP. So I think the, the teaming of IBM and Hortonworks is propitious of further things that they'll be doing in the future, not just governance, but really putting together a broader cloud portfolio for the next generation of data scientists doing work in the cloud. Do you think Hortonworks is, is a legitimate acquisition target for of IBM? Of course they are. Why would, why would IBM you know, educate us? Why would IBM want to acquire Hortonworks? What, what does that give IBM? O open source mojo, obviously. Yeah, mojo. Um, what else? Um, strong loyalty and, uh, with, the, um, with the Hadoop market with developers. Mm -hmm. um, and so also the developer a real angle yeah. would supercharge the developer angle and maybe make it more relevant outside of some of those legacy systems, but, is that but, Yeah, fair? but also remember that Hortonworks came from Yahoo, the team that developed uh, much of what became uh, Hadoop, and they've got an excellent team, uh, strategic team. So in many ways, you can look at Hortonworks as one part acquihire if they ever do that, um, and one part really substantial and growing uh, solution portfolio um, that in many ways is complementary to IBM. I mean, Hortonworks is really deep on the governance of Hadoop, IBM has gone there, but I think Hortonworks is even deeper in terms of their, their laser focus on So government. ecosystem expansion, and, yeah. and it actually really wouldn't be that expensive of an acquisition. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, 
you know, north of a, maybe a billion dollars might get it done. Yeah. You know, so would you pay a billion dollars for Hortonworks? Um, not out of my own pocket. No, I mean, if you were IBM. You yeah. think that would deliver that kind of value? I mean, you know how IBM thinks about, about acquisitions. They're good at acquisitions. They look at the IRR, mm -hmm. they have their formula, they blue wash <laughs> the companies, and they generally do very well mm -hmm. with acquisitions. Do you yeah. think Hortonworks would fit that profile, that monetization profile? I wouldn't say that Hortonworks, uh, uh, in terms of monetization potential, would match, say, what IBM has achieved by acquiring Netizen and turning Cognos, that, and, uh, yeah, yeah. or SPSS. SPSS. I mean, SPSS has been an extraordinarily successful. Well, it's, it's IBM. the day IBM acquired SPSS, they tripled, they tripled the license fees. As, yeah. as, a, as a customer, I know. Ouch! But it worked. Yeah. I mean, it was incredibly successful. Well, yeah. Cognos was, Netizen was, and SPSS. Those three acquisitions yeah. in the last ten years have been extraordinarily pivotal and successful for IBM to build what they now have, which is really the, the most comprehensive yeah. portfolio of fit to purpose data platforms. Second to, uh, their, you know, so in other words, all those acquisitions prepared IBM to duke it out now with their primary competitors in this new field, which are Microsoft, who is newly resurgent, and Amazon, Amazon Web Services. Absolutely. In other words, the, the two Seattle vendors, Seattle has come on strong yeah. in a way that's almost, Seattle now in big data in the cloud is eclipsing Silicon Valley in terms of where, you know, it's, it's like the locus of, 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 um, of, of innovation and really of, 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 of customer adoption in the cloud space. Quite amazing. Well, Google's still hanging in there. So. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> right. All right, Jim. Really a pleasure uh, sure. working with you today. Thanks so much, uh, really appreciate it. Thanks for bringing me on your and, team. And uh, Munich crew, you guys did a great job, really well done. Chuck, Alex, Patrick, wherever he is, and our, our great makeup lady, thanks a lot. Everybody back home. Uh, we're out, this is uh, Fast Track Your Data. Go to ibmgo.com for all the replays, uh, youtube.com slash siliconangle for all the shows. TheCube.net is where we tell you where the cube's going to be. Go to wikibon.com for all the research. Thanks for watching, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Jim Kabilis. We're out. <laughs>